Good morning, guys. Welcome to the class. Today, we have to review the unit number nine, the vocabulary. Okay, are you ready? Okay, guys, so it's time to study. Now, in this moment, I'm sharing with you the presentation for the class. Okay, now. Let me, okay. It's time to start. Okay, so I have to move here. Yes. A partir de este momento iniciamos la grabación de la sesión de clases en Zoom. El uso de este video será única y exclusivamente para fines académicos. Ninguna persona puede usar las imágenes, audio o información que aquí se comparte con fines ajenos a la clase. Los derechos son propiedad del Instituto Oriente AC. Este espacio se rige bajo las normas del manual de convivencia del colegio. Okay? So guys, now today we have to start the unit number nine. Oops, let me see what is happening with it. Okay. In unit number nine, we are talking about the sports. Okay. Hello. Okay. So, listen, please. Or observe, better said in this case. Now, vocabulary from unit number nine. This is the new vocabulary. Observe, please, the new vocabulary. So, in the unit number nine, we are talking about the sports. Okay. Balls, sports, and the sport uh, are, are divided in categories. Now, these are all the complements in this case. Ball sport is uh, the examples are baseball, basketball, bowling, field hockey, football, USA is soccer. Football is in British English, and soccer is in American English. Golf, rugby, table, uh, table, tennis, and tennis. Okay. Sailing, surfing, swimming are water sport. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't worry, Mana. And then winter sport are ice jockey, ice skating, skiing, skateboarding. Okay. And finally, others are badminton, cycling, dancing, gymnastics, rose, uh, horse riding, running, running, sorry. And let me see because I have to escape order. Okay, guys. Now, please take notes about these sports because this is the vocabulary that we have to use in unit number nine. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Vale. Now, let's continue with the next one. Oops. Something is happening. I don't know what is happening, but I have to check. Okay, guys, observe, please, the vocabulary. Take notes about this one. Okay, now, vocabulary unit number nine. So, sport equipment. So, this is the vocabulary. Guys, observe, please, the pictures and the vocabulary. And this, oh, sorry, this is one. So, bat, flippers, goal, helmet, hood, net, hook, ra uh, racket, shoot, cook, skates, and knuckle stick. Okay, so the number one is racket. So, Diana, could you please tell me what is a sport that you can use the uh, racket for practicing the sport? Sorry, Diana? For tennis? Yes, thank you, Diana. Uh, Sophie, could you please tell me what is an example when you need skates? Mm. A sport that you, is necessary to use skates? Skating. Yes, I do skating. Okay. Okay, thank you. Kenya, uh, sorry, America, America first. America, could you please tell me, and then uh, let me see the order. Ah, it's Mauricio. Mauricio, could you please tell me what is the sport in which you have to use to cook? It's, in Spanish, it's gallito, something like that. What is the sport that you need? Uh, I don't know, teacher. You don't know? Do you remember that this is the badminton, no? In a badminton, you need, uh, for playing badminton, you need? Should it quick? Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. So, uh, let me see. Fernanda, could you please tell me what is the, is very common. What is the sport in which you need goal? Soccer. Yes, thank teacher. you. Yes, tell me, Vara. Ah, no soy cosas a teacher. Perdón, pero es que ayer se me rompió mi teléfono y se rompió la cámara. Entonces, no puede, o sea, no, no sirve mi cámara. Don't worry. Thank you for telling me. Thank you. Okay, so let's continue. Don't worry. America, could you please tell me 
America, tell me, please, tell me, what is the sport in which you need a stick? Do you remember? Stick means palo. Well, what is the sport? America? America, are you there? <laughs> I don't know if America is there. Uh, Kenya, could you please tell me what is the sport in, uh, in which you need the stick? Uh, in hockey. Yes, in a hockey. Thank you. Chris, could you please tell me what is the, uh, the sport for ne uh, in which you need net? A net? Uh, there are. Racket. Yeah, maybe yes. Oh, or volleyball or basketball. No, thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. So, uh, Gabby, could you please tell me uh, the helmet? A helmet sport? Uh, American football. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Biri, could you please tell me uh, uh, flippers? Do you know the um, uh, sport in which you need the flippers? It's for swim, but I don't know what yeah. is the sport. Ah, scuba diving, for example, buceo. That's it, scuba diving, you need the flippers. Okay? Yes. Yes, Viri? Thank you. Okay, so, Vale, could you please tell me what is the sport in which you need bat? Mm. Number nine? No. No? Badminton, for example, or tennis, or, or table tennis. It's a table tennis. Okay? Thank you. Andre, could you please tell me the number 10? What is the sport in which you need hook? Can you use your phone, your microphone? No? Okay. Uh, hockey, no? Yes, it's a hockey. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, Sophie, could you please tell me the number 10? Snorkel? And, sorry, is the number 11? Snorkel? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh huh. What is that? Snorkel. Yeah, this is Norkel. Yeah, maybe. Yes. So, thank you very much. So, Sophie is correct. So, uh, Pablo, are you there? Yes, Pablo. Pablo, could you please tell me uh, an example for the hoop? What is the sport in which you need this, the hoop? Uh, the okay. The hoop means canasta. Could you please tell me an example? Ah, okay. Este, pues, basketball. Yes, basketball. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, mute your phone, please. Thank you. So, guys, these uh, are the equipment that you need for practicing a sport. Uh, I, I have a question for you. Ana Sofia, what is the sport that you practice? Atletismo, something like that? What is the sport? Um, basket. Okay, you practice basket. Okay, now these are the elements of the equipment that you need for practicing. Now, watch the next video, please, and observe what is the importance of playing or for practicing better self, for practicing a sport. Okay, now observe, please. Okay, watch the video, please. My question are at the end of the video. The victory of the underdog over the favored team, the last minute penalty shot that wins the tournament, the high energy training montages. Many people love to glorify victory on the playing field, cheer for favorite teams and play sports. But here's a question. Should we be so obsessed with sports? Is playing sports actually as good for us as we make it out to be, or just a fun and entertaining pastime? What does science have to say? First of all, it's well accepted that exercise is good for our bodies and minds, and that's definitely true. Exercising, especially when we're young, has all sorts of health benefits, like strengthening our bones, clearing out bad cholesterol from our arteries, and decreasing the risk of stroke, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Our brains also release a number of chemicals when we work out, including endorphins. These natural hormones, which control pain and pleasure responses in the central nervous system, can lead to feelings of euphoria, or what's often called a runner's high. Increased endorphins and consistent physical activity in general can sharpen your focus and improve your mood and memory. So does that mean we get just as much benefit going to the gym five days a week as we would joining a team and competing? 
Well, here's where it gets interesting. Because it turns out that if you can find a sport and a team you like, studies show that there are all sorts of benefits that go beyond the physical and mental benefits of exercise alone. Some of the most significant are psychological benefits, both in the short and long term. Some of those come from the communal experience of being on a team. For instance, learning to trust and depend on others, to accept help, to give help, and to work together towards a common goal. In addition, commitment to a team and doing something fun can also make it easier to establish a regular habit of exercise. School sport participation has also been shown to reduce the risk of suffering from depression for up to four years. Meanwhile, your self-esteem and confidence can get a big boost. There are a few reasons for that. One is found in training. Just by working and working at skills, especially with a good coach, you reinforce a growth mindset within yourself. That's when you say, even if I can't do something today, I can improve myself through practice and achieve it eventually. That mindset is useful in all walks of life. And then there's learning through failure, one of the most transformative long-term benefits of playing sports. The experience of coming to terms with defeat can build the resilience and self-awareness necessary to manage academic, social, and physical hurdles. So even if your team isn't winning all the time, or at all, there's a real benefit to your experience. Now, not everyone will enjoy every sport. Perhaps one team is too competitive or not competitive enough. It can also take time to find a sport that plays to your strengths. That's completely okay. But if you spend some time looking, you'll be able to find a sport that fits your individual needs. And if you do, there are so many benefits. You'll be a part of a supportive community. You'll be building your confidence. You'll be exercising your body and you'll be nurturing your mind. Not to mention having fun. Okay, guys. Now, as you can see, yes, as you saw in this video, so the importance of a playing, of practicing a, a sport, okay? So, uh, in this case, as uh, BD said, no, uh, Sophie. As Sophie said, so Sophie practices the basketball, right? Sophie? Yes, right. Okay. Now, let's continue with the next vocabulary, please. So, is the second part of the vocabulary? Let me check, okay. So, now, pay attention with the vocabulary. This is the part of the vocabulary, guys. This is the last part of the vocabulary, okay? Now, observe, please. So we have adjectives ending with ed and ing adjectives. What is the difference? Observe. Just to describe the verse, or the adjectives, sorry. The adjectives ending with ed, is for describing how people feel. Pay attention with this, please. If you are using a adjective that has ed at the end, you have to use it for describing how you feel your emotion. Bored, confused, interest, surprised, excited, frustrated. Okay? When you want to express how you feel, you have to use an adjective, but the ending of this adjective is ed. Okay? That's it. In this case, you have to use it. And now, vice versa. When you used the ing ending, is when you want to describe something that causes an emotion. It's not how you feel, it's the cause of your emotion. That is the ING, okay? That is the different. When you want to express how you feel, you have to use ED. And when you want to describe the cause why you are feeling in that way, so you have to use the ING. And these are boring, the, uh, the examples are boring, confusing, interesting, surprising, exciting, frustrating. It's not the same to say, Bored and boring. It's not the same. Uh, excite, exciting. Because exciting is the object, is the thing that you are talking about. And excited is the emotion that, uh, that you're feeling in this moment, maybe. Okay, guys? Now, the examples, oh, please pay attention with this list. 
This is your list. Amazed, amazing, annoyed, annoying, bored, boring, depressed, depressing, disappointed, disappointing, embarrassed, embarrassing, excited, exciting, interest, interesting, relaxed, relaxing, worried, boring. Okay, guys? Yes, Sophie and everybody? Yes? Question about it, guys? No? No questions? No, guys? Please tell me. Let me know if you have questions, please. Mauricio, Fer, Pablo, no? No questions? Ana? No, Gaby? No? No? Ivana, André? André, you're tired. <laughs> no? <laughs> it's tired. Yes, the Congo is tiring and you are tired. Okay? That's it. No, no, uh, no questions, Francisco? Vale? Frank? No? Sophie? Okay. So. Now we have to continue. Watch the video, and at the end of the class, we have uh, we have to analyze about the topic for this one. Okay, now. Okay, now it is time to continue. Watch the video, please. It's the last one. It's the last video that we have to watch today. Okay, now. Pay attention. What is the difference between ed ing? Adjectives with ed or ing. Watch, please. How a person feels. The object of the person that makes a feel the reason. Pablo. <laughs> you never feel in this way. Any similarity is just a coincidence. Okay, so something happened. Okay, thank you for telling me, Bali. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so guys, this is the difference between the adjectives ending with ed 
and the adjectives ending with ing. Remember, when you want to express how you feel, is the ed form. And when you want to describe the cause, is ing. Okay, guys? So, and now we finish the vocabulary. Unit number nine. Okay, guys? That's all for the vocabulary. Okay, guys? Question about it? No? No, it's clear? Okay. No? No question about it, guys? Okay. So, that's all for the class.